Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday, May the 29th. Here it is, 2024, uh, and we're down to the final days here of May. Hopefully, May has treated you well. It's been a little up and down, maybe, in the weather, but we have slowly seen uh, the warm weather come in, and it has been nice, and enjoy seeing that sunshine, even as it is out, even this morning. Uh, once again, hope uh, our power-up does find you well. I know it's been a few days since we've been on, and uh, just with the busyness of the uh, weekend, all of that, uh, I thank you so much for your patience with that, but good to have you on. I want to encourage you, if you're just not jumping on, because we've had such kind of a, a different schedule here in the last several days, hit that share button really quick, and we'll get a few more people on here uh, this morning, okay? And we're going to uh, go to Daniel chapter number 11. Daniel chapter number 11, and we're going to actually look back just a little bit uh, and get a little bit more of a perspective on what is going on in, in the chapter here and give you maybe a little bit more of the historical significance of everything. Remember, Daniel, as he is uh, account, recounting this uh, here in Daniel chapter number 11, we know uh, that for Daniel, this is future events, Okay. And we have the blessing of hindsight, the blessing of looking at fulfilled prophecy. Uh, and so that's kind of exciting to, to think about, okay? Uh, so we're going to look at this. Let's look at Daniel chapter number 11. We'll start at verse number 1 again. We're going to try to get down to verse number 20 here. Uh, we'll see how that goes. want to look at all of these uh, different individuals uh, that are mentioned here, kind of give you uh, some thoughts in regards to where their role is in history and who specifically uh, this is talking about. So let's look, Daniel chapter number 11, okay? And verse number one, uh, where Daniel says, Also I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. And now I show thee <clears throat> the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, uh, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grisha. And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to uh, his will. Uh, and so we've got these tr great rulers uh, in Persia. We've got this Grecian ruler rising up as we read at the end of verse number 2. In verse number 3, we know that that is Alexander the Great. Uh, and then we look into verse number four, Alexander the Great, his time on earth ends, uh, and his kingdom is divided into, into four and ruled by his four generals. So let's look at that. When he, and when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken uh, and shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven, and not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be plucked up uh, even for others beside those, okay? And so we see the four generals uh, taking over for uh, Alexander the Great, okay? Uh, and then we're going to get a little bit of a glimpse into uh, these four individuals, get a little bit of glimpse into uh, some of the battles uh, of Syria, Egypt, Israel, and so on. So I want to kind of share with you just a little bit historically uh, about this, and uh, we'll see see if we can clear up some of this stuff here, okay? So let's look at verse number five. And the king of the south shall be strong, and one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him and have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion, okay? Now, uh, as we uh, consider who this might be, uh, we note that uh, this king of the south and, and one of his prince, uh, one of his princes, he shall be strong. It says in verse number five. Uh, verse number five. Remember, Daniel, looking ahead, we're looking back. Uh, this would uh, seem to indicate that this is Ptolemy the first. Okay, Ptolemy the first uh, being and uh, Seleucia, and Seleucius uh, the first as well. Uh, and we, as we look at history, Seleucius the uh, first. Uh, would be the stronger of the two, ruling the large empire. Uh, and uh, we know that his dominion shall be a great oh, dominion, okay? Uh, and uh, he uh, had this, he and uh, Ptolemy here, Seleucius and Ptolemy had an alliance. 
uh, and uh, they were able to get a hold of Syria uh, through that alliance, okay? Uh, and so then let's look at verse number six. In the end of the years, they shall join themselves together. For the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement. But she shall not retain the power of the arm, neither shall he stand nor his arm. But she shall be given up, and they that brought her, and he that begat her, uh, and he that strengthened her in these times. Okay, and so uh, now in verse number six, we've got a new ruler taking over. Uh, it says, the end of the years, they shall join themselves together. So we've got Ptolemy II uh, uh, coming on the scene here. We also have another individual, uh, Antiochus II, coming on the scene. And uh, these... Uh, uh, what goes on in, in uh, these kingdoms and with these rulers and oftentimes there is uh, uh, peace treaties that are formed, alliances are formed through marriage uh, and so on. And so what we have here is these monarchies doing the same thing. Uh, and uh, Ptolemy, is the, the uh, history tells us that Ptolemy the second here uh, demanded uh, that Antiochus, Antiochus the second here, uh, that he divorce his wife uh, and, and so that he could marry his daughter, okay? Uh, and uh, so that, that happens. However, uh, Ptolemy, uh, Ptolemy dies uh, after two years. We kind of see that mentioned here. We see the king's daughter of the south should come to the king of the north to make an agreement, okay? We kind of see that going on there. Uh, and so Ptolemy dies, so Seleucius takes back his first wife, uh, and uh, his first wife then <laughs> murders him and his, and his second wife Bernice there, uh, and we see that there is no happy, happily ever after in this uh, kingdom here, okay? And so as we kind of read this, we see uh, and in the end of the year, so verse number six again, so we kind of see how, how the Bible describes this. Uh, and in the end of the years, they shall join themselves together for the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king's daughter of the north. So we see that, but she shall not retain the power of the arm, neither shall he stand. So both of their lives are ended, but she shall be given up and they that brought her and he that begat her uh, and he that strengthened her in these times. And so we see uh, that there is no happily ever after in this marriage uh, with we see that uh, Antioch II is murdered by his wife uh, his wife uh, uh, Laodice Leotis, uh, murders uh, Antioch II and his other wife Bernice okay now let's look at verse number 7 and we're introduced uh, here in verse number 7 we're going to look at Ptolemy the third. Uh, and Seleucius the second here, okay. Uh, and actually, it was interesting. My daughter just mentioned to me as she was looking at her paces, uh, and uh, uh, I think it was Bible. Are you doing Bible? Mm -hmm. uh, and she was. Uh, she said, "Dad, how do you say these words? The Ptolemies, okay." And that's where we're at here in Daniel chapter number eleven. The Ptolemies and the Seleucids, right? Uh, and she's off camera here not exactly thrilled that i'm talking to her uh but anyway so that's what she's uh, she's kind of studying and reading so anyway let's look at verse number seven but out of the branch of her roots uh this would be uh laodis uh, but out of the branch of her roots shall one stand up in his estate uh, which shall come with an army and shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north and shall deal against them and shall prevail shall also carry captives into Egypt their gods with their princes and with their precious vessels of silver and of gold uh, and he shall continue more years than the king of the south so the king of the south shall come into his kingdom and shall return into his own land so now there's this uh, new leader in Egypt uh, these excuse me uh, and this new leader in Egypt uh, and looking to uh, this this leader being the brother of of believed to be the brother of Bernice uh, and they are attacking the northern kingdom that being uh, uh, Syria there uh, two kings they uh, they had uh, attacked Egypt these two kings that attacked Egypt they returned home and, uh, and and all of that kind of stuff and we see that their captives are brought back carry captives back into Egypt 
carried their gods, their precious stones, all of that uh, carried back into Egypt. Uh, and then it says, as we continue in verse number 8, and he shall continue more years than the king of the north. So the king of the south shall come into his kingdom and, and shall return uh, into his own uh, land. Okay? Uh, and then we look at verse number uh, 10. Uh, and let's kind of uh, walk through some of these as well. And we're going to be introduced to, to Ptolemy the fourth, also uh, 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 Antiochus the third. Okay, uh, and we'll kind of see just a little bit about these guys. Let's look at verse number ten. But his sons shall be stirred up, and shall assemble a multitude of great forces, and one shall certainly come and overflow and pass through. Then shall he return and be stirred up even to his fortress. And the kings of the south shall be moved with Kohler, uh, and uh, shall come forth and fight with him, even with the king of the north. Uh, and he shall set forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand. When he has taken away the multitude, his heart shall be lifted up, and he shall cast down many ten thousands, but he shall not be strengthened by it. For the king of the north shall return, shall set forth a multitude greater than the former, and shall certainly come after certain years with a great army and with much riches. And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, but they shall fall. So the king of the north shall come, cast up a mount, and take the most fenced cities, and the armies of the south shall not withstand, neither his chosen people, neither shall there be any strength to stand. But he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him. And he shall stand in the glorious land, which by his hand shall be consumed. Okay, and so we've got uh, a lot of back and forth here uh, between uh, the kings of the north, the kings of the south. We've got uh, leaders rising and falling here. Uh, we've got this uh, in verse number 14. Uh, it says, and in those times there should be many stand up against the kings of the south. So there's this revolt, this rebellion uh, in verse number 14. Uh, in verse uh, number 15, we see, so the king of the north shall come and cast upon a mount, and take the most defense cities, and the armies of the south shall not withstand. So now Egypt uh, is defeated here. Uh, we see in verse number 15, uh, we see in verse number 16, it says, But he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him, and he shall stand in a glorious land, which by his hand shall be consumed. So that glorious land being uh, the land of, of Israel there, uh, being caught in the middle uh, of this battle between the kings of the north and the kings of the south. Okay? Uh, we note, let's continue in verse number 17. He shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his, of his whole kingdom, and upright ones with him. Thus shall he do. And he shall give him the daughter of women, corrupting her, but she shall not stand on his side, uh, neither uh, be for him. After this shall he turn his face unto the isles, and shall take many. But a prince for his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease, Without his own reproach, he shall cause it to turn uh, upon him. And so uh, we note here in uh, uh, verse number 18, uh, this uh, being a reference to the Roman uh, uh, rule here, uh, the turn his face to the, uh, to the isles here, to the, to the coast and all of that kind of stuff. And so we've got uh, the Romans coming on the scene here. Uh, and uh, then they kind of uh, begin to rule here, uh, even in this, uh, in, uh, over Israel and so on. Uh, and then you look at verse number 19 as well. Verse number 19, then he shall turn his face toward the ford of his own land. Then he shall stumble, fall, and not be found. And then I want you to know verse number 20 here. This is kind of where we'll end once again. Then shall stand up his estate. Uh, a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. Within a few days he shall be destroyed, neither neither in anger nor in battle. And so what we have here, uh, we have a ruler coming to power here, uh, Seleucius uh, in power. Uh, 
Uh, and we note that he raises taxes, and historically you can kind of follow that along there. Uh, and he raises these taxes, uh, but he dies shortly thereafter. Uh, and it's not uh, in anger or in battle. Uh, it's believed that he was probably poisoned. Uh, and then a new new ruler comes uh, comes on the scene, and we'll look at that maybe uh, maybe tomorrow. And so uh, I know I've, we've kind of really quickly gone through a lot of this, uh, and uh, probably did not do a very good job. But there was a lot of back and forth between the north and the south, between Syria, between Egypt. We know that the Romans come in uh, as well and begin to rule as they as they. Uh, and enlarge their kingdom, enhance their coasts. Uh, and so uh, Daniel kind of getting this glimpse of what is to come here. Uh, all of this is happening really probably uh, th two to three hundred years before Christ comes. Uh, and, uh, and so this would all be B.C. leading up to the before Christ, okay? And so there's a lot happening as world powers are rising and falling, countries are rising and falling, leaders rising and falling. Uh, and so we see the, the Ptolemies, the Seleucids kind of going at it uh, and so on. And so uh, hopefully uh, maybe this wet your whistle just a little bit. Uh, hopefully it didn't confuse you too much and that uh, we didn't get too much into the weeds on a lot of it, just kind of hit some of the high points. But uh, hopefully uh, I, want, I would encourage you to go through and study through this a little bit more. Uh, familiarize yourselves a little bit more with history. And so uh, we're going to end with that today. We'll pick up verse number 21 tomorrow, uh, and we'll see if we can get down towards the end of chapter number 11 as we continue to look at some of these historical figures uh, leading up to uh, the time of Christ. Uh, but we'll go ahead and end with that today. Thank you so much for being on. Sorry once again for the last couple of days not being on, uh, but uh, we had... Uh, let me just kind of recap a little bit as well. We had a wonderful weekend. I want to say congratulations to our three ladies teams that placed first, second, and third in our cornhole tournament. Uh, and wonderful job there. Uh, and also, it's good to be in the Lord's house. Good uh, to be challenged in the Word of God. See God work in hearts. And so I want to encourage you, let's remain faithful uh, to what God has called you to do. Uh, let's remain faithful to the ministry that God has called you uh, and for many who are watching that's Covered about the Church, let's be in prayer. Uh, we've got uh, our, our cottage prayer meeting Thursday night. This Thursday, we'll encourage you to be there. We've got uh, our church tonight. Hope to see you all then. All right, hit that share button once again. Lord bless you all. Have a great day, everybody. And we'll touch base with you again tomorrow.